from player Sam walking to part 7 of our model factory hero Lancia HF Delta Integrali Evo video build. So in part 6 we dealt with getting all the body panels ready for primer. We got some of them um, all into shape, test fitted, make sure everything fitted well. Uh, and today we're going to get all those parts primed. Well, all the white metal parts are getting primed. Uh, we're going to mask off the engine bay and we're going to get our wheels built up, sprayed and all decaled and sorted. Then we come back in part eight and hopefully start work on all the bodywork. That's the plan. So not the most riveting video today because it's kind of just a matter of course of stuff we need to get done. Um, but I've made a start on the interior. It is done. Bit of a mishap with the roll cage. I might have melted some of it. I'm waiting on spare parts. We'll deal with that in the next few parts anyway, so it might have happened. Um, so some of the interior is already done, but I'm going to save the footage to add to a main part of the video build itself. So there we are. Right, so let's get straight going and let's get into some priming. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. So in the last part, we focused on getting all the bodywork panels all into shape, all prepped for primer. Um, and here we are with the white metal. So we're going to put our zinc um, primer down, our etch primer, um, in preparation for our normal primer. So we've done this with all the white metal parts. So we'll carry on doing it with these. So we've got our 0.35 Apex, 16 PSI. And this is straight out the spray can. This is the U-Pol. Uh, self-etching primer uh, neat at the can decanted and just sprayed on it sprays beautiful absolutely levels lovely no issues at all really nice primer to spray and just needs one two decent coats to put it in place uh, let that dry and then we can prime it in our normal color primer so this way we should get full adhesion to the white metal and it should help aid our painting if we have to mask anything uh, we know that we've got no issues with the paint coming off. And it's also a nice self-leveling filling primer as well. So like I say, this stuff just bought from a local, local motor factors. Um, we've used it on all of the white metal parts. It wasn't the cheapest. It was about £15 for a very large, uh, I think it's like a half litre can. Um, and we decanted it. And like I say, it's gone down great. We've used it so far on loads of the other bits. These are some of the larger parts we are priming today um like i say just a matter of course we know we're going to get a good base primer on there and like i said it's got some nice filling abilities as well so uh well worth doing this step you don't have to you can go straight to a lacquer primer or even a water base should you wish but i've done it this way in the hope that we don't lose any paint to chip in uh or other issues like that so just one of the precautionary measures we've done of course all these parts are cleaned in our tumbler our magnetic tumbler as well and they've all been fully degreased as well before we've mounted them ready for primer. Now some of the larger parts like the boot lid and the bonnet are going to prove troublesome. Um, so because we need to do inside and out, we're going to spray one side, let that dry, flip it round and spray the rest. That way we're going to get a nice uniform even prime and we shouldn't have any issues at all. So like I say, these larger parts are quite tricky. As you can see, the likes of the bonnet underneath, lots of different angles to get in there, quite complex shapes. So we just need to make sure we're thorough with our priming and we get all those little recesses and angles and corners and everywhere to make sure they are all equally primed. Like I say, it's not necessarily a step you have to do, but for me, priming burr metal on large pieces like this, photo etcher wouldn't really bother as much, but with this being white metal, I think it's a good course to do as you can see it sprays beautiful it's probably one of the best primers i've ever sprayed to be honest um just absolutely lovely it's very uh very forgiving to use and goes down really well as you can see we're getting some nice even coverage there one thing i will say is it absolutely stinks 
So make sure you get your respirator on, you've got a good spray booth, a window open with some ventilation, uh, and maybe don't stay in the same room while it off gasses because it really does absolutely stink. So like I say, these larger parts are a bit trickier to uh, prime just because we've got to hold them. And to mount these on anything, it would be uh, quite tricky because of the sheer weight. This bonnet weighs a ton. It really is a substantial piece of white metal. Um, but holding it this way, let one side dry. Dries almost instantly, this stuff, especially in the heat we've got in the UK at the minute. Um, it's drying really quick and uh, no bother at all. But just covers lovely. It's actually a pleasure to use, it really is. And uh, like I say, all the prep work we've done on all the white metal parts should ensure that hopefully when we come for full assembly later on, we don't have any fit issues. Fingers crossed, because we did test fit everything and adjusted everything where required. Hopefully everything could go together pretty trouble free. With all that dry, we've got our Tamiya fine surface primer now. Again, decanted, thinned a little bit of lacquer thinner with retarder. Uh, and we're through our 0.2, sorry, the 0.35 apex. Uh, at 16 psi again i'm going to put a couple of light coats of this down to get everything primed in white obviously we're painting the body shell white um so you don't want to be priming in gray not ideal so all the parts are given a couple of light coats of gray uh, white primer over the gray primer except for these rear vents which are going to be red so we've got a color match of red to the decals at some point so we're going to get it all decaled up and then we can have a play around with some different paints uh, probably have to paint them a few times to figure out the correct colour. Now the door window surrounds are going to be black, so we're going to prime these in Mr. Service of 1500 black. Usual thin consistency, about 60% was level and thinner. And just give this a couple of light coats to give it a nice black prime. And then later we'll come back in with some LP5 and get some semi-gloss black down on there. So like I say, it's a bit of a mixed match video today. It's not really doing anything in particular, but it's getting things out of the way that need doing. So we're going to prime all these parts, get all these ready for paint. Uh, and then we're going to get our wheels together and mask off and paint our engine bay. So this is all leading up to our paint preparation, which is going to be the next step in the next video. I've already started assembling some of the interior parts. So we've got another video part on the way there with those. I'm just waiting for some replacement parts with a roll cage because we had a little bit of an accident with that and we'll get to that later on. So we've got some resin parts for the engine bay. We've got this Valance at the front. We've got the engine bay uh, inner with all the suspension turrets on and we've got the body shell itself. So we're going to thoroughly degrease these with you and airbrush cleaner on a toothbrush just to make sure any residue is off the resin parts and then we can prime these again in preparation for what we're going to do. Now all the interior on these Lanciers is a metallic dark silver color. I wouldn't say it was gunmetal, and it's certainly not silver, but it certainly is a dark silver color. Uh, we used it on the chassis last time, and that's what we're going to prime all the engine bay with on this. Um, now, all the interior of the car is that color, but for what we're going to be able to see later on, it's not really worth painting the inside of the car uh, because the hassle of trying to mask it both now to paint and later when it's white would be a bit of a nightmare to do so i opted not to do it so what i'm going to do is where the body panels are going to stay white i'm going to mask those off because we're going to prime in black first and then put the silver down so i don't be getting black paint on the white panels because we may end up with a color variation then and i don't want that at all we don't want some darker patches of white we want to be nice even color all around so it was some tricky masking took a while to do this we're going to mask off all the areas we don't want to spray in black and silver. So I've picked my points. we we'll follow some lines on the bodywork to mask up to. And we're going to copy that, go around, and then as you can see, when that's all done, we use some cling film to mask the rest of it up ready for primer. So the cling film's a lifesaver, especially on something this big. Uh, it saves a huge amount of masking tape. Just make sure it's wrapped around enough and seal down. And then with some Mr. Service of 1500, bit tricky to show on camera today this because of the size of this body we're going to prime all this engine bay and um, basically because this is going to all go silver so I have a couple of coats of the mr surfacer carefully applied and then on our other parts as well we can get our primer down in preparation for our silver color so lots to do just some careful priming 0.35 apex as usual 
the Mr. Surface of 1500 Black, very reliable primer. And of course, we're using black because we're putting a metallic colour down, and it does make the metallics pop. Now, this is the same silver mixed colour we used on the chassis. This is Tamiya's TS100 mixed with some TS17. So we get a dark metallic grey silver, is what we're going for here. If you look at the real cars, they were painted this colour out of the factory. Uh, I believe it's so they could look for test stress fractures on the chassis. So that's what we're going to do. For a bit of interest, a little bit of colour, we're going to do it. And I believe it was the works cars were painted like this and the non-works were all white. That's what I've been told anyway. Whether it's true, I don't know, but it certainly looks that way looking around the pictures of non-works cars. But the Tamiya TSs, these like to go on a little bit wet, so make sure you put a good wet coat down at the end, or you can end up a little bit bobbly. But nice and easy coverage 0.2 mil apex at 16 psi with this paint goes down really nice as you see once we open the bonnet when it's all built we'll have a nice contrast with the silver uh engine bay and chassis and what have you it'll add a nice bit of contrast to the build excuse the plane going over it's a very hot summer's day my door is open on my cave so you can open the plane going over. Well, there you go, you can hear it. And then these turret top mounts as well, these painting. So there we go, that all painted, we can unmask it all. What took ages to do, it takes mere seconds to undo. And we had a good demarcation on the paintwork. It doesn't matter on those front wings because the front wings are separate parts. I've already checked all this. It's all gonna be covered. What does matter is the clean demarcation of the engine bay and uh, it's looking good looking very good now thankfully the lancia is not the largest of cars it's still big in 12 style don't get me wrong but it's not a humongous thing compared to the 12 scale skyline it's actually quite small and there we are so it's looking good that's all dried happy with that that's looking rather good and then our wheels so the first stop we've got the resin spare wheel that comes with the kit it's got a few little wisps of resin flash around so I'm just getting a cocktail stick just to wipe them off. They literally wipe off so they don't get any sand in at all. If you do need to get anything a bit harsher in there, get a knife in there. And all the white metal parts. I actually put these back in the tumbler for another run just to get them a little bit cleaner. And it did make a difference. But on some of the areas, they need a little bit of a sand just to get some of the pitting out of it. Um, now, you've got to be very careful and refer to the instructions on this because there are specific ways these wheels are built. So both... All four rims are the same, but there's two different sides to them. One's got a little lip on the edge of the wheel. I'm trying to put the wheel on back to front here, I realise in a minute. And one edge is flat. So that flat edge there now, the way that wheel is now is the back. There's a rim that runs around the edge. And then there's a flat edge for the front where these brake ventilators go on. So if you look at the instructions, it's not the clearest to see. But there's a rim on one side and it's flat on the other. The flat edge is for the front, so make sure you've got those on the outer side. And the bit with the rim is on the uh, rear. So quite easy to do once you can see it. We've got lots of holes to drill. And uh, fun story, drilling these holes put me out of modeling action for two days. I don't know what I did. I did something to my arm. Uh, whether I, I don't know, trapped a nerve or something, I'm not quite sure. But I did a few... A lot of drilling with this kit this time with all the wheels and everything and uh, i could barely move my arm the next day i couldn't even rest it without being in agony so uh, yeah be careful drilling you never know what damage it'll do now the road wheel nuts they are hollowed out the top some of them are not the clearest um hollow so i've just got the pin vise in there just to widen them a touch to so make them all even so just a little bit of drilling in there likely to get to those and then we've got the hubs that go behind the wheels as well. So these need drilling out. Quite big parties, quite a big hole. And I could really feel this um, hurt my hand. I actually said on the live stream, and I think that's what caused it. There was like a little bit of RSI or something. I have no idea. But all I know is the next day I was in agony. Um, very, very strange. But it's sorted now. Seems to be all right. And just off topic, my little boy was given a car coloring book by Andrew DeWar. Thank you, Andrew. And he made me a little copy of my Volt Mustang. My little boy made that, drew coloured in everything. So he did a good job there. Uh, and then on each of the rims, they need the road wheel holes, uh, road wheel nut bolt holes drilling in. 
like I say, a lot of drilling on this one. So make sure you pay attention to the instructions uh, on the assembly, especially the way those wheels go around. Uh, and just pay particular attention to any drill holes and how big they need to be. And just take your time. Don't rush this stuff at all. I've managed to not break a drill bit yet. Everyone told me I need a lot of them. But I've not broken a single drill yet. Just testing the hubs on the back and they fit fine. Uh, I'm just going to scuff up the edges of the aluminium turned wheel rim. Just so it gets a bit more adhesion with the paint. And then with everything cleaned up, making sure we've got the correct side. We can add a bit of super glue using our thicker super glue and our precision nozzles. For a nice bead of stay glue around the edge of the wheel. So you can hear those collared doves in the background. Again, my door is open and it's red hot. It's a very warm day today, very humid day. Yeah, we pop the rim front into the wheel. And there we go, there's one assembled. They're very pretty, these ember metal, they really are. But just pay attention to make sure you get two fronts and two rears. Now, the wheel front is a very precise fit. As you can see, look on a slight angle, it wouldn't fit in. If I take it out and put it in flat, a little bit of a push, and it goes in nice and smooth. So the glue is just a precautionary measure, really. And then the ventilators on the front, they just slot over the top. And we can glue those in later. That those will be glued in place once the wheels are screwed to the car. Now again, we've got our self, um, sorry, our acid etch primer because obviously these are metal, both turned aluminium and white metal. And we're going to put a nice coat of down, coat of this on these. Again, precautionary. We don't be losing all our paint, especially this one's going to have a tire pushed over the top. So quite important that we get a good primer coat down. And on this, we've got lots of little angles and recesses and underneath as well. So nice thorough job needed here. Apex performing fantastic as usual. It really is a phenomenal airbrush. Um, sounds like a total sales pitch, but it is. If you've got one, you'll know exactly what I mean. Just so simple, easy to use, fuss, fuss free. It's not, you know, fussy on paint. Just sprays everything perfect. Really does. There we go. With a nice coat of that down. We can move on to the ventilator. Get this a nice primer. But it's actually very satisfying primer in these parts. Obviously, being 12 scale, they are big. The wheels are huge. So it is quite satisfying painting these bits. And the acid etch primer is, again, quite satisfying to spray just because it covers so quick. So easy to paint. As you see, all our holes are pre-drilled in there. We've got some rivets to add later. And there we go. Tammy White Primer again, because obviously the wheels are going to be white. We're going to paint the wheels eventually in the same colour the body of the car is going to be done, which is Lancia, I think it's 210 Bianco White, I think the colour is. So I've got a colour match colour from Paint Nuts, the paints we've used before, and the likes of the Escort Cosworth and the uh, the uh, Hobby Design Porsche we did. We used those paints on that. So good paints, reliable. So me and Jamie uh, Bean, uh, Beat, Bean, Jamie Bean, who the hell is he? Jamie B bought a bottle each. And uh, yeah, Jamie's used it already and it looks wonderful. I'm yet to paint my body panels, but we'll be getting there in the next part. So nice coat of white Tamiya primer on everything. Get inside and out and around the edge of the wheel. So make sure you get all those angles. It's quite easy to miss them. So I tend to spray around the front and then at 90 degrees on each angle spinning as we go. And then the ventilators are going to be black. There's actually a decal to go on these. So we're going to prime these in Mr. Service of 1500 black for now. And then we've got a carbon composite, will it be on this? Carbon composite um, decal to go on these later on. So we'll get these painted black and then we can get our decal in place later. So as usual, Mr. Service of 1500 black performing flawlessly. Covers really well. Nice and quick, self-levels really well too. 
And then we've got our paint. So we've got some of our empty bottles. There's our paint nuts color match paint. So I think this 50 mil bottle of paint was about, I think it worked out between the both of us, about £12 posted for me and Jamie. And this 50 mil of paint, I'll make about 100 and about 100 mil, I think it is, roughly, of paint. Now these bottles are supposed to be 30 mil. They're not, the bigger, because the way I mix this in a minute is I put, um, I think it was 50 mil of paint in the mixing cup, and then um, I filled it to the brim with thinner. So that was about 60% thin then, uh, and it barely even filled the uh, the bottle. And that's like 25 mil. So these are a lot bigger. So we got over well over 100 mil. I reckon we got about 120 milliliters of paint off this 50 milliliter bottle thinned. So really good. Obviously, it's very thick as it's a touch of paint. So it needs a real good mix with the paint mixer. Uh, and fun fact, when you've done this and you've got really thick paint on the mixer, don't actually switch it on because it sprays everywhere, including all up your arm and all over your t-shirt. So don't do that. Yeah, not that I did it. Honestly, I didn't do it at all. But I'm giving it a real good mix-up. Like I say, I thought I'll do 15 milliliters of paint. You see how thick it is. It is very, very thick paint. So there we go. It's 15 mil of paint. Then we grab our Mr. Hobby Level and Thinner. And we're going to fill it to the rim-ish of this mixing cup. So it's about 25 to the marks. And then, see, I just switched it on by accident and covered myself in paint. What an idiot. See, told you, didn't I? Absolute muppet. So there's about 50 mil of paint, and we've added about another 50 mil of thinner. Now, what I will do, and how I'll know it's a bit thinner, uh, in a bit is I will put more thinner in the bottom of this because there's still paint in there. So it is thinned about 60%. But we've nearly got about 30 mil of paint there. And those bottles are supposed to be 30 mil. And uh, we get a lot more in there than 30 mil, as you're about to see. So there we go. So I reckon those bottles hold about 40 mil in total. Quite comfortably. Now, I was going to just pour some back in. And I looked at the bottom and thought there's a lot of paint left over in there. So let's get a little bit more thinner. It's probably another, what, three, four mil in there. We'll give it another whiz round. And we'll put that in. What we'll do is we'll just keep repeating that until all the paint's used. And we've got about two and a half bottles of the paint. There we go. We've labelled it as well. So we've got about 120 mil of paint, I would say. Roughly 100, 120. Uh, obviously, it's been left for a while, so we're going to do a quick mix-up again as well. Badger paint mixers are an invaluable tool. And uh, start with the spare resin wheel. We're going to paint it up. Now, with this resin wheel, I wish I'd primed this in grey and then white because there's a colour variation when you hold it next to the white metal rims. And you can see it quite clearly later on. So, yeah, obviously priming white on white rather than white on grey has had a bit of a tonal difference. But one's going inside and the other's going on the outside of the car. So it's not the end of the world that they're slightly different colour. But this is one of the white metal wheels now. The turned aluminium. I'm just giving this a good coat. It's unbelievably for forgiving paint. That it really, really is. Um, whilst uh, drying for the first coat, we've got some LP5. Semi-gloss black to paint these ventilators in. And we can go back and probably put two like coats. Two, three coats of the paint nuts paint on the wheels. That way we know we've got a nice uniform white colour. Like I say, the paint nuts paint sprays flawlessly. Really is nice and easy to use. No issues with it eating anything. Doesn't eat the plastic. Works really well. So the wheels are dried overnight now. It's the following day. And we've got these carbon decals to put on the ventilators. So we're going to cut them out. Now there's a lot of markings to the front of the decals. Which looks like kind of the adhesive kind of markings. Um, so we are going to clear coat them later. We're going to semi-gloss clear them later on. And that will get rid of any of that. We've also got the speed line wheel markings there as well. So you can get those in place. A little bit of water on the bench. A little bit lazy doing this. But there's no point wasting a ton of water in a, a pot just to get these off. So just put it on the bench. Leave them in there for a little bit. Let them soak. Uh, now the modern fact you hear are decals are really good. They've gone down really well. No problems at all. 
like I say, slide it straight off. Make sure you get it centralized. They're quite difficult to get them central. So just take your time here, get it all lined up. Obviously, we've just two of them, just two on the front to do. And then we've got some ultimate normal decal solution. I'm just going to start setting these in place. So I think we use the ultimate and the strong in the end, a little bit of heat as well to get these to conform because they go with a flat edge of the front of the wheel, leaving the center free and leaving it black. But we need to get it over the outer edge of the rim. After 10 15 minutes, it starts to conform the decal. Again, hit it with the brush. And just keep working at it slowly until we get it all conformed in place. Once you're happy it's getting there, hit it with a little bit of heat. Now, I notice it needs the heat more on the edges because we've got to fold it over and get it around the little rim raised areas of the uh, the ventilator itself. So I was hitting it with heat and then hitting it with the brush, hitting it with the cotton bud, just trying to get everything to conform and bed in place. And they did bed down really easily, to be honest. So with the heat, with the use of a cotton bud and the brush, we gave them bent over in place. I just went over it one final time with some of the decal solution to get these things fully bedded in place. And onto the speed line decals. So two of these on each of the wheels, opposite corners. So they fit nicely on the wheel. I did actually think these were Oz rims. I didn't realize they were speed lines. I always thought these were Oz or OZ, whatever you want to call them. But they're actually speed lines. And the decals just had a nice touch to it. Nice little bit of detail. So just all five wheels need these on. So it's a case of get them on, get them lined up, get them spaced equally apart. Hit them with some decal solution. Job done. Nice and easy. Nice and simple. Like I say, Model Fred Hero decals are going down great. I'm hoping the body panels are going to be just as easy. I really do. Um, not looking forward to them, to be honest, with the size of them. I'm hoping they're not going to be an absolute nightmare. But with anything like these, it should go down really well. So I've got one there from a distance, and I've zoomed in on this one a little bit just to show where they're going in. So I'm just using some of the spokes as a reference to get everything equal and lined up. And there we go. The uh, Tammy decal tweezers are invaluable for decal. They really are great with the wide um surface area of them they're great for picking up decals they've got a very rounded edge so quite good for positioning stuff as well so a worthwhile addition to the tools and then hitting it with some ump normal just to get it all bedded in place and rinse repeat for all the other four nice and simple to do starting to look really good these wheels and there we go now, clear coat, I opted to go with um, Miss Hobby Super UV Cut Clear Gloss Coat. So, a couple of light coats on everything and a slightly heavier one at the end. Don't go too heavy to begin with those UED decals. So, a couple of mist coats, let them dry 10 15 minutes to flash off, and then come with a wetter coat at the end. You shouldn't have any issues. So, I just wanted to get a light gloss coat to them just to give them a little bit of depth. Didn't want the gloss coat like 2K, but certainly wanted a glossy finish to them. And they're looking really good. And then on our ventilators, I've gone with Mr. Hobby UV Semi Gloss. So you'll see this now. You'll see the adhesive on the front. The kind of blemishes on the decal. You see it there? All the, the bobbling. And watch as soon as you hit it with the semi gloss, it vanishes. It's gone. So there we go again don't go really heavy with the coats that's about all you need to do just a light coat then come back 10 minutes later and just put a bit of a wet coat down now with the semi-gloss obviously you don't want to go as wet because it's a semi-gloss not a full gloss coat now one thing i should have done before i did this was drill out the spare wheel holes for the road wheel nuts and i completely forgot so we're doing that now so as long as you're nice and careful and steady there's demarcations in the wheel where you drill 
as long as you're nice and careful, you won't cause any damage at all. But I would recommend doing this before paint. I was just a bit of a silly billy and completely forgot. Like I say, some careful drilling. We can get this in. It's just aesthetic on this one because this isn't attached. This is a spare one in the back of the car. And on the actual white metal wheels as well, we need to drill the holes for the tire valves as well. And again, probably should have done this before paint. I uh, completely forgot. There's a nice little indentation on the wheel for it. So nice and simple to do. Just don't go too far through because if you hit the turned aluminium, it kind of does bend your drill bit a little bit. So just be steady and uh, drill nice and slow until you're through. Like I said, I've gone halfway through, stopped, blowing away the white metal. And then carried on. So don't forget, this is a thick piece of white metal. And we've got quite a substantial part to go in. So I did drill in quite deep. But it's more the fact that I'm drilling nice and slow to not cause any damage. Now the ventilators at the front have got this little PE kind of brace across the middle. Very, very tricky to bend. Uh, I opted to use my tweezers because it's a multi-bend piece. There's no real guide on how to do it. So you kind of got to wing it by eye, to be honest, which is a little bit tricky, I'm not going to lie. Um, so I just looked at pictures online, how they sit, just bent it out, bent it back in, in out, did the hokey cokey, because apparently that's what it's all about, isn't it? And then bending over the edges, and that's where it mounts to the ventilators themselves. So we drilled these holes out earlier on, right in the centers. I'm just lining it all up, making sure it fits, which it does. And then once we're happy, we can do the other one and then get some primer down on these. And there we go. I didn't drill the other one. I completely forgot. So here we go. It's like a step back in time. Drilling them. Control the holes. Again, should have been done before, but this one, I think I did one to test fit. And I completely forgot to do the other one. So here we go. Here it is. It's either that or actually thinking about it, I might have drilled them. But the holes weren't big enough, and I've come back here and I've opened it back up. That's probably what I have done, to be honest. It's been about a week since I filmed this. Because I'm a little bit behind on the videos. So that's probably what I did do. I probably did a pile of hole and then widened it, thinking about it. I'm just checking everything's going to fit. Because you don't want to get it all painted and have to start manipulating it around everywhere. And here we are on the spray booth. We've got our five tie valves. We're going to paint these in Mr. Surface 1500 black. And we're going to leave them in that colour. We could go rubber colour, but I thought, no, we'll just go 1500 black and leave it like that. So it's a couple of quick coats of that on the white metal. And then on these P bits, we'll just go in 1500 black on these as well. Now, you could ask to etch prime these as well. I didn't bother. I think the rear wheel nuts had already been done. I did those um, on the very first batch of parts we primed. But the white metal, I just went straight in with 1500 black. So, quick test fit and everything fits in great. No problem, all our lines up pretty well. Just pushing it all fully home, making sure it's in place. And there we are. Then I'm just going to add a little dab of glue from behind. Yabba dabba do, little dab of glue. Just to secure it in place. And that way we don't get any glue marks on the front. And there we go. Repeat that for the other side. And that's how it's done. Quite tricky those parts. So take your time with those if you come to them. And then our tire valves. These are dinky little parts. We've already drilled out the holes. So a little dab of glue. Yabba dabba do. Just test fit. Yeah, perfect. So a little dab of glue off that masking tape. Just gently push it home. And there we go, again, repeat for the other four wheels. And then our rogue wheel nuts. So we've cut these off the um, pore plug. And with a little bit of glue in the holes, we're just going to slide them through. Give a little push home. And then these go through the back and the hubs fit on them as well. They kind of slot over each other. Uh, so we super glued the hub on the back. I haven't got any footage of that, but we super glued the hub on the back uh, after we got the row wheel nuts through and lined it all up. And then with the tie on, 
which literally just slid over the top really easy. There's a rear wheel complete. Now with the tires, I don't know how to scuff these up. I'm not sure I'll leave them like that. And there's our front one with our ventilators too. Yeah, so I'm not sure how to scuff the tires up or leave them like that. That's something for another day. And there's our spare one. We'll have a think and figure that out later. So there we go, that's where we're at today. Like I say, not the most you know, interesting of videos, but stuff that needed doing. The wheels are great, really nice quality wheels like those. Um, the white we got from Paint Nuts is good. Happy with that colour on that. It's going to look very nice on the main body. And I'm really looking forward to getting some paint down on all those body panels. So the white metal parts are ready to go. Um, we just need to prep and prime all the resin bits and then we can get some paint down on all the body panels and get some decaling done which i'm looking forward to getting to the decals quite uh anxious about getting to that stage as well but also looking forward to because i do like decaling uh, and then we've got a clear coat the beast as well which is going to be an undertaking that skyline it was a bit of a pig to do thankfully this thing's not quite as big so hopefully it won't be as troublesome but there's just so many separate parts to do it is going to be a little bit of a challenge to clear coat so We'll deal with that when we come to it, but I want to get this to clear coat uh, and that can be left to dry then while we deal with all the interior and getting this thing well on its way to being finished. Another news, I ordered my Lancer, uh, Lancer 037 today. Got it from the same place, got this one. Did try Hobby Easy, but they had a different version of the 037 and they had the blue, blue and yellow one I did in 24 scale. The Griffone one, is it, I think it is. Um, the Fiat one, I can't think of what it's called now, the scheme. Uh, they were showing that in stock, but that kit's from 2016, so I don't think they had it. I put the order in on Friday, and it's Tuesday now, and I've heard nothing back, so I don't think they got it in stock. So I just thought, right, I saved £40 and went to the French place I got this one from, because they wanted £65 postage from Japan for the kit. Um, so the Lancia Martini Water Rolls car, is hopefully on its way to me um so excited about that as well so we'll do a review on that one and of all the model factory heroes we could go crazy thinking i'm going to buy loads of them honestly they're the only two that are in the current range to kind of really get my interest i do like the beta as well i wouldn't mind the beta um but for now the 037 and the delta are where it's at and that's what i've done i sold a load of kits to fun buying them uh, I've sold a lot. My MP4 6 is gone. My 12 scale is gone, as well as all the bikes I had. So, and a few other kits to fund this purchase. So, yes, um, yeah, big thing for me buying stuff like this. It is quite an undertaking to do. So, uh, yeah, look forward to getting that. And like I say, I'll do a review of that when we get it. So, there we go. As always, if you leave any comments down below, they are appreciated. Do uh, like hearing back from you all. It always spares me on with the build. Any comments or suggestions, welcome to hear them. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to support the videos, keep the live streams going, keep me building models for you guys and girls out there. There's a patron down below. If you become tier two or higher on the patron, um, you get a two week early access on all the videos. So well worth becoming one just for that. Uh, if you become a patron of any level, you get an exclusive Wednesday morning live stream, which is recorded as well. You can go back and watch it later if you can't catch it live. And there's other perks on there, which are all itemized through the different tiers. And without that patron support, I couldn't do this. So I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all very, very much. There's also a PayPal me link and a Buy Me Coffee link down below, should you wish to do that. And there's links to everything else related uh, social media-wise for myself, Facebook, the forum, umpretail.com. My own personal modern page is on there. My scale mates is an email to get in touch with me as well and my amazon affiliate store and the products i use are all linked in the description down below as well make sure you sub to the channel click the bell notification give the video a thumbs up and like i say please leave a comment question i haven't got one today have you got one for me doesn't have to be modeling related have you got a question for me you'd like to know there we go that's where we're going to leave that today stay tuned because the next video will be on the 25th scale galaxy models uh, Chevrolet Fleetmaster, which has just been 2k today. It's in the booth looking good So that's the next build series and then I'm gonna get the patrons to pick my resin build For the end of the month for the ISN resin group build. So yeah, keep an eye out for that as well So enjoy the rest of the day everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye